Praise the Lord. Uh, Kingdom Mind Ministries, we have Pastor Kevin Bond here, uh, the great pastor of the Citadel Cathedral of Praise and Worship. Uh, we're so elated to have you with us and interviewing uh, with you. Uh, tell us a little bit about yourself, how long you've been in ministry, and tell us about this great cathedral. Well, uh, I'm glad to be here today, Kingdom Minded Ministries. Um, and Pastor Rogers, thank you for taking this time out. Uh, I've been, I preached my initial sermon at 18 years old. Wow. And uh, we've been in ministry for decades, a couple of decades. And nice. uh, we have been uh, pastoring for 22 years. Amazing. So we've been working um, in ministry for a while. And we have had an opportunity to see God do some powerful and great things. Uh, it's been a great, great journey. I'm humbled that he uh, desires to use me for ministry. Wonderful. Do you remember what your subject was or your title of your message was when you started preaching? My initial sermon yes. uh, was entitled, uh, Jesus is Passing By. Jesus is Passing By. My goodness. And uh, where were you? Where did you start off in ministry? What What was your starting place in ministry? Uh, I was raised at the Institutional Church of God in Christ. All right, you can't join in. You got to what? Be born in it. <laughs> Be born in it for sure. <laughs> right, right, right. We have generations in that church. My uh, grandparents, um, like three, four generations in there. Awesome, awesome. So, tell us about your influences and your preaching style. Who influenced you? Uh, to preach the way that you do? Did you have any specific influences to uh, to inspire you where you are today? Well, I've only had one pastor my whole life. Okay. Bishop Carl Edward Williams yes. Sr. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Only one pastor. And he was, I mean, he uh, married my parents. He uh, christened their children. Um, I got baptized in water in that ministry. All right. Um, got the Holy Ghost there. Okay. Started to preach there. Wow. Everything. So all of what, um, you know, he imparted within me, all of what he had given me. Yes, yes. It's just, I see him in everything I do. Okay, so so I, we're fascinated. Uh, the, the many albums that we'd heard you on, Worship and Praise, the narrator on many of those albums, a lot of people, a lot of the CDs and the projects that have come out with Worship and Praise, you are the narration, the voice of those projects. Tell us how, uh, you know, you use the big words and the plethora and, you know, these words that, uh, where do you get these words at and how do you, what, what inspired you to, uh, to talk about the creativity and the things that you do on, on these projects? Well, I'll tell you, um, my first lady, which was Shepherd Mother Elvania Williams. All right, all right. Uh, she would narrate for the institutional radio choir. Okay. Before She would introduce the song on the broadcast. Yeah, yeah. And uh, she did that for many years. So she was actually my first inspiration. Yeah. You know, and then Edna Tatum oh. from Gospel Music Workshop of yeah. America. The, uh, Reverend James Cleveland used to use, oh, I used to love the way she would set up songs. Yeah, and yeah, so yeah. Those two have definitely have been my inspiration for that. And um, didn't even know that I wanted to do that, but uh, I began to do that. Um, and when I go back to think, of like how it began, yeah. that's how it began.
Pastor, how do you feel the projects that have come out with worship and praise have inspired the country, the world, the music world at large? Well, we do hear so many people um, say they are inspired by my narrations, you know, um, and it actually started off, of course, before worship and praise even recorded, you know, and I've been with them. At, I joined, like, in their second year, the Lord, you know, had me to go over to help with them. And I guess you would call me the hype man because <laughs> I, I would come out and exhort before the choir would sing. Okay. And we, you know, or in between songs, and we would just go up and praise. And so what we wanted to do, or what the record company wanted to do, was get some of that, you know, um, recorded about what I'm talking about for the choir sings. So elevation exhortation and things like yes. that to, yes. to just invite the presence or invoke the presence of the Lord and to invite him into the project or the recording. Absolutely. Wow. And then, you know, they started to do special interviews okay. just for me. Okay. Um, uh, or I can, you know, talk from. And it's, it's, it's I didn't know that it was going to be what, what it, it is. Was, okay, what it was. But okay. it became a, a great thing and the people you know, started asking me to do stuff on their projects. Nice. All throughout, you know, the world. People, I mean, we want you to come and narrate for us. We want you to come, and we got a, this, uh, this, this, this track. We need, we need some words to it. Yeah, yeah. And that's what it became. Wow. Do you believe invoking the presence of the Lord is important in 2019? Absolutely, positively. We need, you know, the Lord is here. He's always here. Mm -hmm. He's never not here. Okay. We need to get the people ready to receive them. Okay. We need to get their minds focused and get them in. We're already in one place. I'm going to get the people with one accord okay. so that God can do what he wants to do. Very He's already yeah. ready to work. Uh, Always here all the time. My God. It's us that are going to prod us along, yeah, yeah, yeah. push us up, yeah, yeah. elevate us and yeah. bring us there. It was the assignment of the Levites to... Uh, send praise and worship before uh, the battle and to, to send the, 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 the Levitical priesthood first, to send Judah first. Explain that to me. Uh, I see you working in that same vein. I see you working in that same uh, avenue of sending Judah first to elevate, to exhort the people of God, to get them ready to fight this war. Uh, explain that to me. Do you, do you believe that's still necessary? Absolutely, positively. We've got to get people with the mindset of, you know, what God requires, what God wants. And if you do this, he'll, <clears throat> if you do this, he'll move, he'll move for us. Mm -hmm. He'll do great things if we are giving him praise, if we're giving him glory, if we're giving him honor, mm -hmm. if we're lifting him up, he will come in our midst and when the atmosphere is right, he heals. When the atmosphere is right, he fights. When oh, the atmosphere yeah. is right, he does what no other power can do. So I absolutely positive, positively believe yes. that we need to get together and really get the people in that vein where they can experience the fullness of God. Uh, the Bible says miracle signs and wonders shall follow them that believe. Have you seen God do miraculous things over the time that you have been pastoring and in ministry and a, a part of this uh, phenomenal body of Christ? We have seen God do so many great things. You know, even when we were going out with the choir, I still do go out when I'm able to. You know, concerts were turned into revivals. Oh, goodness. You know, people that were there would come to the altar and get changed. And we would get emails or we would get like letters or whatever or text messages. This person was here tonight and uh, they were suicidal. Yes. Uh, but uh, the words of the exhortation, the words of the song, the music, the, the, the praise moment that yeah. came through. Yeah change their life and and, uh, and now they're preaching or you know it has happened so many times mm -hmm. then even at the church you know we've watched God you know our church is in the urban and so we have people that come from the shelter we yeah. have people that come from all walks of life you know from the at least to the greatest yes yes but we've seen God change people that were in shelters and Get, watch them matriculate in school and get an NBA, yes. have no place to lay their head and get on their feet and actually have something they can call theirs. That's phenomenal. And how uh, we are now we are in the edifice that the Lord has placed into your hands and you have moved from several locations, but you have found a permanent residence uh, here in the city of Brooklyn in the borough of Brooklyn. Tell us a little bit about where you are now and what the Lord has done for this great ministry. Yeah, we were looking for a building for 
quite a minute, you know, but the Lord shared with us, you know, do ministry where ministry is to be done, you know, and don't do ministry just, there are many people that have a building and not even doing ministry. Yes, yes. So that was, you know, our thing. Even without a building, even without four walls, we are doing ministry. Wow. We are changing lives. Yes. People are getting saved. People are getting set free. And they're getting established. I mean, because we worked on the total man. The total man. You know, the whole being. The whole okay. thing. Okay. So, you know, uh, it was doing ministry even without four walls. Yes. But it was our desire that the Lord would bless us with a permanent place of our own that we can call our own. And uh, after 18 years, because um, we moved in here three years ago, the Lord blessed us with that, with this building. And it was a God sent. Yes. We've looked in every crook and cranny in Brooklyn and found nothing that we were able to afford. Yes. And nothing that was free. I mean, the time that our buildings were years ago sure. when the city was giving, giving them away for a dollar. Yes, yes. That wasn't our story because <laughs> everything was over a million dollars with no roof and no floors. My just goodness. a shell. My nothing. And, uh, you know, but the Lord said to us that um, I've got your building. My goodness. And that when you get ready for it, it will be ready for you. And this edifice is absolutely magnificent, every area. Uh, what has been your inspiration? I know that there are many pieces, uh, many uh, parts of this uh, church. It looks like heaven. Was that a part of your uh, ideal uh, uh, for this, the ministry, the look? Well, you know, I tell you, you know, we love opulence and yeah. we do love to put in the very best in God's house. Sure. And so in these years that we started ministry, I actually thought that, you know, we would be in our building like the uh, first year. <laughs> okay, okay. You know, so we had got a uh, storage unit and as I found things that I loved, I would buy and put in storage. Wow. So the dream of God has been a lifelong yeah. uh, a journey. Uh, that you have were able to take the things out of storage and place them into the body, into and, this edifice. And everything fit. Everything that I've accumulated down there. And we had like three storage units. Wow. You know, um, but you know, when the uh, promise took longer than I anticipated, mm. we get, you know, because sometimes that's the rea reality of it. Wow. It wasn't that year, it wasn't that first year, it wasn't wow. that second year. And we went to the table many times to close on different things, but it just wasn't for us. And it fell apart at the table. We just kept on building, you know. Tell just, me about that promise. I mean, God gave it to you, but you still held on to the promise. And you didn't see it after the first year, second year. But 18 years later, God gave you the promise that you, had, the manifest. Tell me about that holding on to the promise. There's somebody out there, Pastor, that's going through a situation. And they're holding on to the promise. But if you're like giving up, uh, you you held on to the it, promise. Because if Come the on. Lord said it, he's going to bring it to ah. pass. If the Lord said it, he's going to bring it to pass. <laughs> yes, sir. And the, the I think the hardest thing is to keep the people encouraged. Wow. You know, as well as myself. Sure. You know, we had low times and high times, but the Lord always sent a word. I'll tell you, the what's coming is greater than what's been. Yeah. was like a watch word for us because from the very beginning, you know, we had low days and high days and in between days, but that kept on telling us if the Lord said it, it's going to come to pass. Greater is coming. Yes. She's got to hold out. She's got to hold on. And people were getting blessed all in front of our face. My goodness. You know, people that we started out with, yep. the Lord was helping them, you know, blessing them to find sure. what they needed sure. to do ministry. And we were still going from pillar to post wow. like gypsies. But if the Lord said it, it's going to come to pass. Hallelujah. Not in our time. Yeah, yeah. But in God's time. Mm -hmm. And God's timing is always right. So yeah. keeping the people encouraged. Mm -hmm. He kept giving us watch words. He kept giving us, you know, uh, uh, praise reports. And yeah. the people in the congregation yeah. was being blessed. Yeah. Yeah. And we just began to save what we could save, mm -hmm. you know. And we began to purchase things that I saw that I would like. Mm -hmm. And we would take it into the building. Everything that we bought, we bought knowing that when we get the building, it's coming with us to the building. Wow. That reminds me of David when the Ark of the Covenant was yes. taken out or taken away and, and there was an opportunity for David to go and recapture what belonged to God and bring what belonged to God back into the city of God. Do you feel like God has done that for you and this ministry? Yes, absolutely. I feel that the Lord has given us time and in that time of space, you know, uh, 18 years ago, this building was not vacant. Mm. 
you know. So it was just the Lord was just getting <laughs> us ready for it while it was getting wow, ready for us. Wow! Wow! And uh, He told us that our our blessing was hidden. Mm. It was hidden Goodness. in the thickets. Yeah. You know, uh, but he was certainly... Wait, wait, wait. Explain thickets for those young people that don't know what a thicket oh is. Oh, my, oh, my, you know. Uh, in the branches, uh, in the... Yeah. Amongst the stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He had a ram in the bush. Wow. He didn't have to kill Isaac. Goodness. Because the Lord had a ram in the bush. Goodness. And it was hidden yeah. amongst stuff. And, you know, so we kept saying and kept believing. Yeah. This, and, you know... And we looked at several buildings that we thought was it. Sure, sure. This was this was yeah, it. This is it. This is it. Wow. I mean, we did the Jericho march. Yeah. We uh, laid hands yeah, on. Yeah, yeah. We fasted during the twenty-one days yeah. with just water. Sure. And we, this must be it. This yeah, must be yeah. it. But we really have to hear the voice of God and uh, know that you know and anticipate yeah. that even if that falls through, He's got something better. Wow. And. Everything that fell through, mm -hmm. when we got to this, we knew this was had, this had to be it. This was the better that we couldn't get before. Pastor, you shared something with me uh, before the interview about uh, there was a stained glass window in this uh, building. And when you saw it, you knew immediately that the things that you purchased 18 years ago or however long ago, that they matched perfectly. It was just a sign that God was saying that this is the place for you. I explain that to me. Several things in this building that let us know that this had to be the place. Our logo, um, which was done like 18 to 20 years ago, yeah. maybe 22 years ago, the logo itself, the facade of it, looked like the front of this church. Wow, wow, wow. You know, and one of the things, we, we, we purchased so many things, but one of the things we purchased were these like uh, uh, gothic mirrors. Okay. And then when we got to this place, it was these gothic mirrors were like uh, stained glass windows. Yes, yes, yes. Inside the sanctuary. Yes. Perfect fit. I said, this wow. is what the Lord had me to do that for. Wow. And, and not just those, but other many other things. My grandfather, um, who was the chairman of my deacon board, okay. who passed away, um, I guess about maybe eight years ago now. Yes. Um, he told me that um, um, he wanted to march with us into the building. But um, the Lord didn't see fit for that to happen. Mm -hmm. But he told me that he already saw the building. Wow. He said, I saw it and it looks like a little institutional. Wow. You got to go yeah, up the yeah, steps yeah, yeah. into the service. <laughs> and uh, big windows, thin windows, like institutional. Wow. He told me that wow. on his deathbed. And that was another confirmation for us. Amazing. You know. Amazing. Pastor, I, I want you to say a word of prayer as we wrap up this interview uh, for those that are holding on to the promise, those that are waiting for God to manifest uh, the promise. Uh, come on, tell us a little bit about it and then go ahead and pray uh, for those. You know, it's, uh, it's a faith walk. It's a faith walk. We walk by faith, not by sight. It's a faith walk to trust God, not knowing where he's sending you, where he's putting you, what all he has in store for you. But it's a faith walk. But if you trust him, like the old folks said, and never doubt, he will surely bring you out. But it is a faith walk uh, that you have to keep yourself encouraged. And sometimes it doesn't come from without. Uh, it has to come from within. And if nobody else believes, you must believe. That God will do what he promised and said he would do. He's good for it. His word is good for it. He never makes a mistake. He does all things well. His timing is always perfect. In all of his ways, his ways are passed down finding out. But he knows just how, just when, just where, just who. We've, we've just got to trust him. Even when everything that we, look, that we see around us says, give up, throw in the towel. People will discourage you and say, I knew it wasn't nothing to you. I knew it wasn't going to happen. Just a pipe dream. You just, just, just give up. The, like Job's wife told them, just go ahead and curse God and die. Yeah. We have those people that will constantly throw those kind of darts our way or those innuendos our way or make us feel we miss God or make us feel that we didn't hear God yes. or make us feel that, you know, our season is up, it's over yeah. and we missed them yeah. and it's just too late. God is moving with someone else now. Yeah. But you've got to know that if God said it, he's able to do it. And he's going to use you to do it. 
He's going to bring past what he promised you to do it. You just have to keep the faith knowing that he's able to do it. And Father, we thank you. We thank you in advance for those that are hearing this telecast, this broadcast, this, this, this message that I'm sending to them tonight, today, that they will continue to trust you, continue to believe you, continue to hold on when everything in them says give up, but continue to hold on to what you said. And then I want to pray, God, that you will send forth laborers into their vineyard that would upgird them, that would hold their arms up, that will help them to keep moving, going on in that same vein, even when others walk away. Send them their team, send them their support that they need to help them in the lonely hours, in the darkest hours, in the hours that everybody else has walked away and shook their head and said, it's not going to happen. I want to thank you for encouraging them right now and knowing that the promises of God are yea and amen. And though it tarry, wait on it. It shall come to pass. Thank you in advance for this shift that's coming, for this season of get it that is coming, and that you're going to put it right into their hands and that they're going to go with perfect vision and then give them provision, pro money, money, money for the vision to make it come to pass. And that what you have given them, that no devil in hell will be able to steal it, snatch it, destroy it, mutilate it, cast it aside, or cause it to be nothing. It will be great. It shall be great. And greater